to Whitling's Prototype. This is episode number 17, <clears throat> and we are going to attempt to make sure that our path nodes are set up correctly as soon as the level loads in. So there's a couple issues currently. I spent a little bit of time off stream just testing things, and I found some interesting stuff. So even with the simplest possible setup, um, our guy is dying. <clears throat> and that is because of the order of operations. So the problem here is, where is that? I believe that's in the cube manager. <clears throat> so we spawn our cubes, we set them up. Um, this is new, so we'll talk about that in a moment. But then we would validate all path nodes. And this is where the problem was coming in. <clears throat> the on trigger enter does not get executed until the fit the first fixed update loop of the new path node. And so we were actually trying to validate these path nodes without with empty lists, essentially. Empty lists of possible path nodes. All the links were failing because nothing had been <clears throat> overlapped yet. So I decided that after we spawn and set up all of the cubes, I'm going to loop through each of the cube cores and call this find possible path nodes function. <laughs> and you can see here that I am a monster. I do have a triply nested for each loop. Um, but once again, this is a prototype. I just want to make sure it's working and fun. And then I'll go back. I already have a plan on how to make this more optimal. But once again, this is just something that happens once at the beginning of the at the beginning of the level on initialization. So it's not like it's in a hot code path. Uh, it's pretty safe to sort of just ham fist it and brute force our way through. <clears throat> so I look through each of the neighbors that the cube has. If the neighbor is not null, I start searching through all of my faces. Uh, make sure that the face has some nodes on it. And then I start lo looping through all of the test faces on the other neighbor cube. So it is an n squared problem, but our cubes only have six faces. So the exponential component of the algorithm doesn't really get out of hand. It's not too terrifying. Um, so I grab the first and last path node from our face that we're on. I get the test face nodes first and last. And then I just do a series of checks here and I make sure I'm only testing to see if this face, excuse me, face node here overlaps our test nodes. And then we've got face node B versus test node A. And all this add possible path node does is it just adds this node to our possible node links. <clears throat> and it should, in theory, um, connect these two. Cube four, this is our up face. So here our possible path node is one, but our linked path node is none. I'm curious about that. Did it just collide with itself? <laughs> yes, it did. It did collide with itself. Oh my. Um, that is a mistake that we should get rid of. <clears throat> that is in our cube core. How would it collide with itself? Let's turn off these. And this one, let's turn our right back to unset.
Okay, so let's do some debugging. See what's going on here. So I believe cube four is currently our start. Oh. Oh my. That never happened. But I could have sworn that I tested this earlier. Neighbor dictionary dot count. Zero. That would do it. Um, we do have a find neighbors function, don't we? So this is our cube core start. I mean, maybe we could pull find neighbors into the public domain. And then our cube face, no, our cube manager. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. No, current core. And this should be public. And let's move it to the right area. Well, okay. An element with the same key exists in the dictionary. Sure. Um, right, let's put this as unset and back, unset. And then up is straight. Let's see if this continues forward. <clears throat> Cool. Ah, there's one more thing that I added I didn't talk about. This unset faces have no path. This is just a nice extra boolean to constrain my testing space, uh, constrain my problem set. <clears throat> because if each face, or if each cube only has one face on it, then the amount of debugging that I have to do is reduced drastically. Let's see what happens if we do a right L. Moving to next face. Moving to next face, but he just didn't walk down yet. That should be fine. I'm not too worried about his orientation, but I do want him to move towards his turning, his walking. So here we calculate the direction. Uh, 
This is our first direction. If we overlap the target node, start pathing new face. And here our direction is from us to a new target node. And we need to normalize this, don't we? So we should just should just sort of like sink down into it and then slide over, which might be fun to watch. Nice. Oh, that was unexpected. Yeah, that's about right. Let's try, let's make the path a little bit bigger. Then down, we'll make a straight. This is forward. Let's do one more L. So hopefully this will prove that he can walk around all of these corners happily. Ooh. Looking good, buddy. Sure. Whatever you think is best. <laughs> Dead end, oh dear. Okay, well, we know this is bad news. Not hiding in there. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> but hopefully you can see how being able to define what faces are on what cubes really easily makes life quite quite lovely. Let's move this down. That is not necessary. Set in the way. Okay, everybody can still see the inspector if they care. Um What's our time looking like? Well, wow, not a lot of time at all. So he died there. Back L. This node doesn't have a linked path node on the face. Oh. Neither does he. This guy does. So what's special about you? It is linked here. Hmm. 
Very strange. So it's in the possible path node link list. Let's look at how we set up this linked path node on same cube. I do believe that's in the cube core. I do believe it's public as well. Find connecting path nodes on cube. Okay. For each face, get the current face. Make sure there's path nodes. Get first and last from current face. Testing. Don't check against yourself. Get the test face. Make sure the test face has nodes. Cube face. What is, where do we set these nodes up? Awake. We do it in awake. That's fine. Current path A, test path A, path A, test path B. Test path B. Hmm. Maybe it's this argument exception. He already exists. Let's find where we call find neighbors. Uh, we could just say if neighbor dictionary contains So we'll make sure, I don't foresee how this would cause any issues. But removing errors is always a safe bet. No. <clears throat> hmm. What? These are still here. Start find neighbors two thirty five. Ah. No errors. We got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Damn.
Hmm. Let's turn this off. By the way, you can hold control and auto lock objects to full unit grids, which is pretty nice. So let's see. I want to debug when the back face is testing against the down face of cube 2. Um, find connecting paths on cube. Back face to down face. Cube two. This is cube two. Very cool. Current face is uh, zero. I believe that's up. Okay, so up linked. Yeah. Um, up right has an L. A little bit worrying. Down is bottom. Okay, so bottoms should actually connect to back, which should be the last face, right? There we go. Okay. Right, that has nothing. So now we're just testing forward. Forward should actually connect as well. Okay. This one is, let's see, up, right, down. Ay, ay, ay. Path node list. Link path node on the same cube. None. I feel like that exited a little bit early. Okay, let's try this again. Debugging is a very important skill. So this is up, right, down is another. Ah, straight. There we go. <laughs> so now we're looking at the down face. And path, one of the paths should connect to forward, which is index four, and the other one to connect to back, which is index five. So, Two, one, two, three, four. This should be successful. Right. 
break. It's the break. Ooh. Yeah, there's a chance that <clears throat> a cube might connect on corners to two different faces. Silly optimization plans. Good grief. Come on, buddy. You can do it. I have faith. Oh, oh. Moonwalking. Ooh. Okay. Let's make a more complex setup of paths. Um, let's do something where they're all straight, right? Down, no rotation. And we'll unset forward and back. Let's see. What? That is the up face. Connect perpendicular paths was called and failed to find a connection. Hmm. Guess he's in here somewhere. Should die soon. Uh oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. That is super strange. I wonder why <clears throat> these two nodes are not connecting. It works if I rotate both of them. That works fine.
Okay, so I believe we've got serious path rework on our hands. <clears throat> there are lots of moving pieces. I'm just tacking on stuff, hoping it's going to work, and that's obviously not happening. So, let's travel over to Blackboard Land, and let's consider... The steps of spawning cubes and linking them so let's see we have well, maybe I can move this here. what happens we have a bunch of cube cores and each cube core has six faces and each face has some number of path nodes I'll say two or three. No, no, we'll just leave it empty. <laughs> that looks like a two-dimensional array. So let's think about the prerequisites. Of what needs to happen before we can start trying to connect path nodes. So one really important thing is we need to deactivate faces. So any number of cubes that are abutting against each other, that word always makes me laugh. Uh, so these two faces should be turned off. And a deactivated face means no nodes are acceptable. Oh, that might be the piece that we're missing. Let's try it. Cube core. Connecting path nodes on cubes. We've tested that. It is happy. Or test face dot get is active. Let's do this here too, but instead of test face, we we'll use face. Because at this point, we should have some faces that are off. Let's trace it backwards. So find neighbors, find possible path nodes. But in setup cubes, we find connecting path nodes on cube, calculate hidden faces, and hide inactive faces. No! <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done the dance. Frig! 
Is he gonna do that again? What are you thinking, buddy? What are you thinking? See what you're thinking. I don't like it. Don't like it, Mr. Whitley. Oh. oh. Is that an infinite loop? No, no, I can't. Oh my god. Why? Why is that happening? So we have a problem with our classic perpendicular setup. However, if I spin to win, I crash Unity completely. Ah, ah, ah. Hmm. It's so strange. Where do we call validate? Connect perpendicular paths. This gets called in validate linked path. Find possible nodes, validate all base path nodes, validate path nodes, validate linked path. Let's check our possible path node links, right? So this guy little cheeky you should have two path nodes that is correct linked path node on face Hold on a moment. Just one second. Linked path node on same face. Okay, this is the right face. This is the one it's linked to. Gotcha. <clears throat> but this does have two possible path nodes. Let's backtrack that a little bit. Maybe it never got there. Count was one, that's not right. Possible path node count is zero. Hmm.
This is the down face, this is the left face. So these two path nodes are indeed correct. They have been found. Let's try... Oh, please go down. Good. Rep reproducibility is desirable. Ooh, look at this guy. Rising from the ground. So this is cube two again. Good old cube two. Uh, let's put a breakpoint in here. We want cube two. Cube two's up face, which would be the first one, which will be nice. Cube face. Oh, this is cube two. Cool. That's straight. Should be able to get these. It should be active. First node has zero. What? One? Hmm, this is very strange. I believe that these first nodes should have one. That's fine. Ah. Got it. Got it. So, when I am setting up my pre-connected faces, this is a top-down view, I am only looking in the cardinal directions. On the side view, I am shooting at cubes for these cubes. But I'm never actually checking diagonals. So it never finds this cube. Uh oh. Yeah, it never finds this cube. So I should draw this in three dimensions. That's given me a little bit of trouble. This is very confusing. <laughs> I need a better way to think about it. So I need a way, essentially, it's this shape stacked on to itself three times. I don't want a full Rubik's Cube check, right? Oh, this is a good way to draw it.
So the center cube is the piece. You can imagine that's the one that we're testing. Oh boy. Let's just say it's in here. Um, so right now, I'm checking these cardinal. Let's use a different color. These cardinal directions. But I'm not checking these diagonal. This one would be a possibility too. Oh my gosh, with corner pieces, all of them would be. Well, that makes life a little bit easier. Uh, the other thing that I'm worried about is our cube has a radius of 0 0.5. And I'm shooting a ray radius times 1.10. However, when it comes to a cube, the diagonal is much larger than the radius. And I need a ray that's going to go through the outer edge of this cube and into the possible neighboring cube. Okay. I'm wondering if we should save this for next class. <laughs> Sorry, I'm used to teaching. Um, uh, I wonder if we should save this for next episode. But let's sort of talk about the concept, because I do believe it should be possible. We have a cube at the center. And we need to shoot a ray to all around above it. And this would be above it, and then we'll need to search on the sides. Yep, and then one level below. So it's almost like I said earlier, we're at the center of a Rubik's Cube. And we are trying to shoot and hit all of the cubes that could possibly be touching this center cube. <sighs> and I do believe We can do a for loop. So a triply nested for loop, we continue if x oh, and y and z are 0. And this is shorthand. 
But if all of them are zero, we can't shoot the ray around, right? And so now, I guess all we do is we make a vector um, with x, y, and z. We normalize that vector. Wait, no, that's length. We normalize that vector. And you know what? Making it normalized is fine. A length of one would pierce all of the cubes. If two cubes were directly next to each other, a ray cast of one would actually land directly on the origin of the other cube, and that's fine. I just need to make sure it hits it. Previously, I did the radius times 1.1 because I wanted to be clever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, only go into the cube just a little bit, just to be cool, because I knew their dimensions. But really, the normalized vector would be perfect. Um, we'll ray cast with this vector, and if we hit anything, then we're gonna check all of our faces against all of their faces. That, my friends, is a twintuply nested for loop. Um, we are gonna need, I mean, I guess we can just write it first and test it out later, but we're going to need eventually probably some sort of list to let us know like, hey, man, we already checked this cube. We don't need 9 times 36 checks on this single cube alone. Maybe we do. 9 times 36, 27, 54, 324? 324 checks per cube. And that's assuming that this ray cast hits. If the ray cast misses, we we basically save a bunch of time. Which is good because our levels are not gonna be really dense like that, you know? Um that would not be fun to have a cube completely surrounded by all these other cubes. Maybe. We'll see. So, I think that's it for me today. We did kind of get our initial path node connections working. Um, we still have our stupid guy doing our... as he's not checking for this one here. And that's fine. We have identified the source of the problem. Now all we need to do is write the code to fix it. So that's it for me today. I hope you guys had a good episode. You learned a little bit. And I will see you again probably tomorrow.